Hello, this is YouTube 31 Pockets, and I'd like to welcome everybody back to my episode number 10 of the restoration and modification of a John Deere 1032 snowblower. The finalization in this episode will be finishing up, setting up our engine, uh, and getting ready for the outdoor snow load testing. So, let's get started. Now, this is the Tecumseh Snow King engine governor right here. Now the way that this thing operates, it comes up out of the block right here and this is one screw we never want to undo. Typically if we have a problem where the engine won't start, it's not going to be in the governor control. Now when we adjust the speed on the governor on this engine, we're going to pinch this little wire here right, right at this point and this will make it so our governor has more or less tension on the spring the way it operates. Now this is a Tecumseh 5 horse Snow King engine that's two cycle. Now this one has a mechanical governor right here. In the same scenario we never want to disconnect or undo the screw. Now when we want to make a simple adjustment to the speed we have this tab right here and we just bend it up or down to create more tension on the spring that allows the engine to, to speed up or slow down. Now, next to it, I pulled down this other engine. This is off a Toro power light. And as we can see, this is called an air vane governor. It operates the same way, but it operates with air pressure blowing from our fan as the fan's twirling. When the engine starts going too fast, this rises up and backs the throttle off on the top of the carburetor. Now it has a tab right here that you also pinch on and bend it back and forth to adjust the speed of the engine. So we'll, we're going to go into that next. That'll be our next thing on our new engine. Now there's a couple different ways of bending the tab. I have a, a, a governor control bending tool but in the case of this 16 horsepower it won't fit into the engine so we're just going to use a simple small pair of um, vice grips with a long nose on them to get up inside into the tight area to do the bending of that tab. Okay, we just bent our tab back a little bit. Now we're going to restart the engine and put our RPM tachometer back on, our sirometer, and test it to see if we've dropped down in RPM a little bit. Okay, now we can see we have it at 3600, almost right on the button. I've done this for so many years, it's, it's pretty simple to 
do after you've done so many but I'll take a quick uh, high definition photo of how where you can see where it's at on this meter we now we did get a little bit of snow last night now today's date is December 31st 2009 but not enough to test the snowblower yet so I guess we got a little bit longer to go usually in the next week or two our big storms start to hit so I did take it out and try it for a minute in this little tiny bit but there's only about an inch on the ground so it didn't really work well we're just about out of time again for this episode so we're gonna go over a few of the things that we got done today now the main thing we got done was our pulley and belt cover the next thing is we cleaned up our turret the track and got it adjusted reset and make sure it operates smoothly as you can see as I crank it we've adjusted the engine to our factory specification RPM speed and now we're going to give it a quick start up and show it to you guys uh, this is pretty much it that just about does it for this project our next episode will be on the outdoor snow load testing for the snowblower so I hope you guys stay tuned in so you can see how this thing performs I wish we had some snow last night or I could take it out and show it to you today but we only got an inch last night so now I'm gonna leave with some high-definition photos of this project so until next time, thanks for watching.